Hello everyone and welcome back to our dreary advent calendar of this year with the story A Husband for Christmas by Jolly Love. Today we're at day eight, Santa Baby. The third time Harry walked into Malfoy Manor, Draco had keyed him into the wards. So now, as soon as he had walked towards the door, they had opened automatically. Unsure of what to do, Harry had stood there alone in the great hall until he called out for Lord Malfoy. Even though he had technically called for Draco, Scorpius had been the first to greet him. Harry! He called from the stairs and basically jumped over the banister right into Harry's arms. He had absolutely not seen that coming, and they ended up both falling to the floor, with Scorpius being white as a ghost over what just happened, and Harry laughing loudly. And soon after, Lord Malfoy appeared as well, and saw the scene on the floor. He was able to detect the small smirk on his lips before he got up. I'm sorry, Lord Malfoy. I wasn't aware I'd been keyed into the woods. That had never happened, not even with Pansy, and not even after he had looked after her two children for the past five years. Draco smiled and inclined his head. Next time you can call for Lolu. She'll bring you to me. Harry nodded once, while Scorpius was running back up the stairs to get his winter clothes so they could go out again. Harry looked at Draco closer. He was absolutely stunning in his royal blue suit and white shirt. No tie? Harry asked and couldn't keep himself from smirking. Draco seemingly always had problems getting his tie straight, even though all of them had to wear ties for all of their Hogwarts years. Draco shook his head inside. I'm not used to them anymore. Does this outfit really need a tie? Yes. Not necessarily, Lord Malfoy. Harry smiled. However, if I do recall correctly, it is pure blood behavior to show up to a matchmaker meeting with a tie. Harry wondered why Draco was so adamant against ties. He seemed to have a real problem with them. The Slytherin disappeared only to show up with a matching tie around his neck a few seconds later. There was also a suspicious amount of water around his eyes. Would you like me to assist you, Lord Malfoy? Harry asked quietly, seeing as Draco was struggling with it. Please? He whispered. Quietly, Harry finished the starter tie and straightened it without worth. He could see Draco struggling really hard under his hands. He also quickly straightened the jacket and folded the shirt over the tie around his neck. By now, Draco had closed his eyes, clearly concentrated on his breathing. Harry stepped back and watched his employer. I'm sorry. Opening his eyes, Draco frowned, looked down at his tie, and then up at Harry again. What for? For your loss. I know it's not easy, and some things hurt more than others. Are you telling me to move on like the rest of the world does? Draco glared at him. Harry shook his head. No. Everyone's different. Some people feel quicker. He swallowed hard, tried to hold back his own tears. Others don't. Some are never the same. Before Draco could respond to that, Scorpius rushed down the stairs. Got it, I'm ready. Can we go to the zoo and see which animals are still awake? Smiling, Harry got himself out of the terrifying mindset and he nodded. Oh, of course, Scorpius. If we're lucky, we can even see the penguins walk around. Scorpius' eyes grew wide and he nodded enthusiastically. Yes, I want to see the penguins walk through the zoo. If we're back before you, Lord Malfoy, Harry turned formal again. I will wait here with Scorpius. He inclined his head when Scorpius suddenly grabbed his arm and tore him out of the manor. Let's go, Harry. Walking through the zoo with Scorpius was extremely funny. Not only were there not many people inside since the weather wasn't the best, but Scorpius' comments to every animal were the best. In the end, he seemed to love the zebras the most, and even wanted to ride one. Harry had told him that that wasn't an option, but just to humor Scorpius, had asked a zookeeper if his son could ride a zebra. Of course, he was answered with a no, but seeing Scorpius laugh so carefree over this was all Harry had wanted. When they were back in the Malfoy Manor, Lulu informed them that Lord Malfoy hadn't arrived back home. 
So Harry decided to give the house elves a free evening and to show Scorpius how to cook something. Later in life, if he wanted to live outside the wizarding world, he needed to be able to at least cook some pasta. Once Draco came home, Scorpius surprised him with his own pasta and a tomato sauce, which Draco either liked or didn't like, but still complimented his son on. With that, Harry bid goodbye to both Malfoys and appeared away to meet Luna and her family for a game night. To be continued.